Hasoichah is alumnin, daf pei, sponsored the Rufu Shalema for Devorah Baschai Rivka. The Mishnah. The Mark continues with other Mishnahis discussing rental agreements. Number one, if one rented a cow together with a plow, workers to plow a field on a mountain, and instead plowed in a valley, if the plow breaks, the renter is exempt. The owner risks the plow breaking on a rocky or mountain terrain. Therefore, plowing in a valley is not a breach of contract. If the contract is reversed, however, then the renter is responsible. Number two, if one rented a cow to thresh legumes and used it to thresh grain, if the animal slips, the renter is exempt. Grain is not as slippery as legumes. However, if the contract was reversed, then the, the renter would be liable. The one determines where the renter did not deviate from the contract and the plow broke, the one who holds the blade is liable. Although the Gemara suggests that it could be the one who holds the goat since he did not direct the animal properly, the conclusion is the one who holds the blade, unless they both knew it to be exceptionally rocky terrain, then both are liable. Mar discusses now a seller who exaggerates the defects of his product, so the buyer cannot void the sale. Number one, the seller included a real defect with imaginary ones. The buyer can void the sale. He inspected the item for the imaginary defects, assumed just those were exaggerated, and the same way that those were exaggerated, the real one was also an exaggeration. Number two, the seller specified one and not the others. In that case, he cannot void the sale. He should have inspected the item for the defect he mentioned specifically. Number three, all the defects the seller mentioned were present. The buyer was particular about one. He cannot void the sale since he should have inspected the item since the other defects were real. Now we move on to a new Mishnah. The Mishnah continues with the same theme. Number one, one rented a donkey to transport wheat and instead transported barley, which is lighter. He is liable for any injury caused to the donkey. Number two, one rented it for transporting wheat and transported straw that is lighter. He is liable for any injury caused to the animal. The mission explains the reason for both cases as the renter added three kabim or one thirtieth more of weight. Now, how do we understand the Mishnah? Here we have a machlokas Abay and Rava. Abaya holds, although a lesech of barley is lighter than a lesech of wheat, its bulk is the same. Equal bulk is tantamount to equal weight. Rava, on the other hand, holds the renter is liable because barley bulk is greater when it is the same weight as wheat. If, however, the bulk is the same, but the weight of the barley is less, the renter has to add a so or six kabim to be liable. If the renter loaded at least three kabim more on a donkey or an additional so or more on a camel than a lesech of barley, he is liable for any injury that the animal, animal is injured. The Gemara now discusses excess loads on other modes of transport. A porter can carry 30 kabim. An excess is one cup. The employer is liable for his injury for exceeding the limit. According to Abaya, the porter buckled before he could remove it. According to Rava, it is not discussing the porter's inability to bear the weight, but the employer must add to his salary when the excess is an additional cup. According to Rabashi, the porter did not unload the excess weight because he attributed his inability to bear it as a result of his personal weakness. Number two. A small boat, excess, is a lesech. A mid-sized boat, excess, is a kur. A large ship, excess, is three kurim. If one purchases a boat in any of these classes without measuring its exact area, he is entitled for them to bear these excesses. Otherwise, he can avoid the sale. Now we come to a new Mishnah. The Mishnah discusses the level of custodianship in relation to craftsmen. A craftsmen are shomrei sachar, paid custodians. The Gemara questions whether the Mishnah can follow Rebbe Meir, who holds a renter, is a Shomer Chinam, an unpaid custodian. By the same token, the craftsman services the item of benefit. He pays for the benefit of the item he uses in the case of a renter. It is a Stam Mishnah that should follow Rebbe Meir's opinion. Rebbe Yud, on the other hand, holds that a renter is a Shomer Sacher since he benefits from the rented item. It would seem he is the author of the Mishnah because the craftsman also benefits from the item that he services. The Gemara resolves this in two ways. Number one, it distinguishes for Rebbe Mayer between a renter and a craftsman. Craftsman benefits in addition to his fee that he withholds the item he serviced until he gets paid. He does not have to run after the customer for the money. Number two, 
It reverses the opinions of the Mishnah for the renter. According to this answer, the craftsman, according to Rebbe Meir, is a Shomer Sacher. Therefore, A, he benefits by being chosen over his competition. B, he gets paid for the job, so he probably earns a little bit more than he deserved.